one reason I was close to the SRI research at the beginning was that um, they noticed that many of their subjects related their, you know, becoming aware of their talent to a light in the sky or to what you, we would call a UFO incident. Uh, I've, I've investigated a lot of, you know, I, I like, I'm, I'm still involved in UFO research. And, but I, I stay away from all the controversies because it's turned into a circus and into a battle of belief systems where nobody goes out and talks to witnesses anymore because they don't need to. You know, they expect that either the government has, you know, little cadavers in a cave somewhere and they won't tell us. So you can speculate on that. You can stay in your living room and speculate on that. Or they believe whatever they believe and they believe it so strongly that they don't need to talk to witnesses anymore. Well, I like to talk to witnesses because they were there and I wasn't. And I take the time to listen to them. I track those cases over months or years. And, uh, you know, I, I want to, to learn what happens in the process. It's a process. It's not an observation. It's not a point thing. And it's not like seeing a shooting star and saying I saw a shooting star at 10 o'clock. It's, it's a process. In that process, many of the percipients, many of the observers um, will describe what can only be called psychic effects. And ufologists deny that. Most ufologists will deny that. They say, you know, these are spacecraft from another planet. They come here, they study us. You know, end of story. Uh, it, it's not that simple. So uh, I, I've learned to, for example, to ask uh, witnesses, uh, tell me, they say, well, this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened. I say, well, what, what had, any, had anything strange happened before? And they say, well, no, uh, except that the phone rang and there was nobody on the phone, or there was a knock at the door and I went to open the door, there was nobody there, or, you know, or I've, uh, I've become aware of certain things and so on, before the, the sighting. So there, there is a continuity there. Again, there is a process. So you can't ignore consciousness when you're looking at, at that. Is there a link? Can remote viewing be used in UFO research? I've seen many attempts, and I was at SRI when Pat Price was at SRI, came up with a set of coordinates where he thought they were UFO bases. Uh, we've actually looked at some of those locations. We, we couldn't validate any of that. Um, so m most of those attempts have been failures. That doesn't mean that they couldn't, you know, give something at some point. Uh, I think the remote viewing of UFO sites usually has not, you know, led to, uh, to, to very much. Uh, again, that's an open area as far as I'm concerned. I don't consider myself an expert. Ingo remote viewed uh, structures on the moon. I don't know if you're familiar with that. But. Yeah, uh, I've uh, had a long discussion with him about that, and I, I can't make sense out of that. Um, the, uh, I mean, we, you know, the, the moon is fairly well mapped by, by now, and I, I know, uh, you know, three of the twelve people who've worked on the moon, you know, are colleagues of, of ours, and so on. So. Um, including Ed Mitchell, who strongly, you know, is a strong advocate of this kind of research and, and remote viewing research. So, so uh, I don't understand that, that connection. But now, the, the Cometa report is um, the, the reason it hasn't had the, the impact. The, the, I, I, should, I should explain what Cometa is. It, it's a there is an organization in, in France which is a, uh, essentially an advanced war college with senior defense officials, usually many of them retired generals and admirals and so on from the French, French military, and they, they study long-term strategic issues, uh, very much like the war college here or uh, some, uh, George Washington University does and so on. And the, uh, a group of them issued a report a few years ago arguing that UFOs should be taken seriously. The, the report is, uh, was published in a tabloid magazine. 250,000 copies hit the street as a report to the French government, to the president of France, on UFOs. Uh, 
Well, the president of France hadn't asked for a report. Now, I can write a report to the president of uh, you know, Tasmania and send it to him. That doesn't mean he's paying me to do this. It doesn't. So there was that feeling. So there was a big impact among believers about people said, no, finally, those military higher ups are taking an interest in it, which was true. But I think they lost the impact by hyping it out of proportion. The, the, the report had a, on the cover a, a picture of a, of a disc over a lake in Costa Rica. Um, well, I brought that picture back from Costa Rica, and there was no credit given to me, which you know, I didn't need credit, but to the people who had taken the picture and had given me the negative, because we had digitized the negative and the picture before and the picture after. This was a mapping aircraft picture. And uh, these were big negatives, 11 centimeter by 11 centimeter, great camera, a lot of detail. There were a lot of things to be said about that, not necessarily a UFO. But that was on the cover as, you know, from the archives of Mr. So-and-so, who was the journalist who put this together. So the, the whole thing stank. Furthermore, the, most of the report is very factual. It's a good description of it's something that any one of us would have, would have written a good description of the, the UFO problem. The last page, which most of the authors of the report had not seen when they signed their name and then they wrote the introduction, uh, General Letty, who wrote the introduction, had not seen the whole report when he wrote the introduction. And they actually threatened to withdraw their name from it. The last page was written by someone whose name has never been mentioned is someone who is in the shadows in France and has manipulated the situation for his own reasons. And it argues that uh, the US has recovered hardware at Roswell. Uh, and he presents it as, you know, in the context of, an of, of what seems to be an official report of the French military, and that the uh, Americans are not sharing that information with their friends in France. So it's very much in an anti-American context, you know, which is very much a political context in France now, and it's driven by an undercurrent that's really, if you understand French politics, which is hard to understand, but <laughs> um, it's, it's driven from the extreme right. A lot of, some of the associated people are in fact associated with the Front National, which is one of the so it was not well received in France because people said, hey, you know, part of this report, we already know and believe there is a UFO phenomenon, and yeah, it should be looked at. But, you know, what's this other thing? I mean, do you have a proof about Roswell? Are you, you know, if there is a proof, we'd like, you know, show it. In, in an, uh, it, what's an official report at that level? You can't just suggest that somebody has something unless you have data. And that may or may not be true, but there was no data. So uh, that's, I think, why it was not well received in France and why it was received skeptically by the press here as well. Because they, you know, any New York Times would, would pick up the phone, call somebody at the Elysee Palace and say, did you request a report on UFOs? And they would say, never heard of these guys. And so that's the end of the story. So it was a missed opportunity. The, uh, the people who wrote most of the report are good people. They are, you know, uh, uh, certainly high, you know, very high level military officers. And I think that whole thing was a missed opportunity to advance the, the cause of, uh, of the research.